Praise the Lord, church. Here we are on October 5th, assembled to hear the Word of God. And uh, turn with me to Matthew 12. In Matthew 12, start with me at verse 22. I'm going to read down probably about ten verses or so. Then was brought unto him, this is Jesus, one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb, and he healed him insomuch that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. And all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the son of David? But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. How uh, shall then his kingdom stand? And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Or, else, how can one enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods that be first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house? He that is not with me is against me, and he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. Wherefore, I say unto you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come. Today's topic is blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. We're going to go through and look at about five varieties of blasphemy against the Holy Ghost so we can fully understand what it means to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. So we are hopefully never guilty of doing so. Here in, 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 in Matthew 12, we see that they, uh, they are, in essence, saying that the Holy Ghost is a devil. They say he, he cast out the, the evil spirits by Beelzebub, by a devil. So, that, so they're speaking evil of the Holy Ghost. They're bringing reproach to the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> They were reproachfully accusing the Holy Ghost. That's a form of blasphemy. It's a form of blasphemy. Let's read about the same thing in Mark 3. Just going to look at all the um, Gospels and what they say about the same thing. Each one has something we can look at. Here in Mark 3, starts at uh, verse 22 to 30, but... Um, I want to focus on, uh, this, was, this was also said in Matthew, but I want to just read all of these so we can, we can see them. For your notes, you should put verse 22 down to verse 30, but I'll just read verse, starting at verse 25. If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Verse 28, Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. And he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiven us, but is in danger of eternal damnation, because they said he hath an unclean spirit. So they were looking at the same account. But, so, one form of blasphemy is speaking evil or reproachfully against the Holy Ghost. But another form that's not really highlighted, but it's also mentioned here, is that if a house is divided. Now David told us a few weeks ago that the house of Satan is not divided, nor, of course, is the house of God divided. Yet, we can stand here today and recognize division in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a problem, because the house of God is not divided. Mm -hmm. So if we, within the house, cause division, we, we are guilty of blasphemy. If we, within the house, cause of vision, then we are guilty of blasphemy. Because we, we are breaking what, what says the house cannot be divided. So, so in order to break the house, there's nothing stronger than God 
So the only way to, to break the house is for some from within to break it. So when we stand in division, when we stand not united, that's why the, 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 uh, the goal for the church is unity of faith and unity in the knowledge of the Son of God. When we stand in division, we're standing in blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so I just want to throw all these, we'll keep reading, let's go to Luke 12. Let's read all these various definitions. And then we'll um, summarize all this stuff. Luke 12, uh, Marcus ministered, ministered to us uh, out of this chapter when he talked about what does your life consist in. And, and the question was, is your life out of context? And in, in some sense, he actually described blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Because in, in the parable, which, which starts uh, down from 13 down, uh, this man had decided that he was, gonna, he was the captain of his soul, and he could do at, with his soul what he so pleased, yet God says, but tonight, you're going to die. Mm -hmm. Right? So, we, um, uh, so, in, in essence, both uh, Marcus's sermon uh, past two weeks, as well as David's sermon, he talked about roadblocks, uh, Satan's uh, insurance policy, and, and we, we mentioned of the three types of grounds, the four types, whether it would be the wayside, the stony ground, the thorny ground, the good ground, that, the, that, that, that third group, the thorny ground, was an interesting group because it, it shows that they've been through deliverance. It shows that they had learned of the Lord. It shows that they had started to produce fruit. And we know the only way to produce fruit is through righteousness. Mm -hmm. So it says these people had, had, had grown in the Lord, yet had started to backslide. Had started to look more into the world, in the case of the world, and the deceitfulness of riches, than in the things of God. So with knowledge, they were now pursuing this, the kingdom of Satan, not the kingdom of God. So thorny people technically are blasphemers. I want you to just see that. They are dividing the kingdom. Are you with me? Not ignorantly, with knowledge. Because for them to produce fruit, it says they've, they, they, they've got a, along the path of righteousness. So I just want to make mention to tie in these sermons of, 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 of things we've been hearing over the past few weeks. But here in Luke 12, I'm going to read, uh, uh, look through verse 4 through 12, because Christ says something very interesting here. Uh, he starts off talking about the fact that we know in, in the end times, many Christians will be brought up in front of magistrates and so forth. Pretty much like if you go read the book of Acts, that's exactly what was happening. There's a lot of persecution in the new Christian church. Well, Christ tells us, well, that's going to happen again. The church will be persecuted again. Okay? But, the, 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 uh, but, but he says, verse 4, I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body and after that have no other they can do. I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, after, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. The air says unto you, fear him. And he goes on. But now we get down to verse 8. Also I say unto you, talk about fear. What happens when fear comes? What happens when uh, you are brought up against uh, the powers of the world? Right? I say unto you, whosoever shall confess me before men, him shall the son of man also confess before the angels of God. But he that denieth me before men shall be denied before the angels of God. So when they, when they bring Christians up and say, do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? Many people will say no, because they fear their life. See, you say, this whole thing is about fear. Don't, don't in fear now not confess Jesus Christ. Okay? But then he makes an interesting switch, because he's talking about himself, right? But here's what he says in verse 10. And whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But unto him that blasphemes against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven. What? Why did he insert that? Mm. Mm. He inserted it because if it's possible for me to not to deny Christ, it's also possible for me to deny the Holy Ghost. But my denying of Christ can be forgiven if I repent. My denying of the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven. It is blasphemy. It is blasphemy. Now, he, he, he gives you a little bit more. You know, he says in verse 11, And when they bring you into the synagogues and unto ministers and powers, take you no thought how or what thing you shall answer or what you shall say. For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. So he's saying you are to be led by the Holy Ghost. If you opt to not be led by the Holy Ghost, you are denying the Holy Ghost, and you're guilty of blasphemy. 
I said, well, make sure you see that. Okay? Because you know, if you wisely switch, he talked about himself, then he switched right into blasphemy because he talking about denying the Holy Ghost. Denying the Holy Ghost. Okay? 